Did you know that Alexander the Great had more than one burial site? According to Greek and Egyptian history, he was buried more than once in different countries and sites. Even his casket was changed a couple of times. The location of the tomb and remains of Alexander the Great is one of the greatest mysteries in history. Over the years, many archaeologists and excavators have devoted their lives to discovering the tomb and remains of the greatest warrior recorded in history. In this video, we'll take a journey through history looking at interesting facts about the location of Alexander's tomb, what happened to it, why it's so important, and the discoveries that have been made on this long search for this historical treasure. Who was Alexander and why was he so great? Before we talk about his tomb and everything, we should probably introduce him and try to understand why finding his tomb and remains is still such a big deal over 2,000 years and several civilizations after his death. Alexander III of Macedon was the king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon. His rule began when he was just 20 and by the time he was 30, he had created one of the world's largest empires spanning from Greece to the ends of Asia. He conquered many civilizations and nations and thus he had many titles. King of Persia, Lord of Asia, Pharaoh of Egypt. I go on but I think by now you have a good idea of how powerful he was. The Death of the King In 323 BC, Alexander died in Babylon at the age of 32. He was sick with a fever for a couple days. His condition grew worse with each passing day and it got so bad he couldn't speak anymore. It is uncertain the cause of the warrior's death. Some historians have said he died of natural causes like typhoid or malaria, which was predominant at the time in ancient Babylon. Others believed he was poisoned. The news of his death threw Macedonia into chaos, especially because he didn't appoint a successor before his death. In the heat of the confusion and the back and forth among the leaders, the Macedonians were completely distracted and did not think to retrieve their dead king from Babylon leaving him in the Babylonian heat. Alexander's remains weren't retrieved until six days after his death, and to everyone's amazement, his body was completely unaffected by decay. Initial Funeral Plans After Alexander's death, the highest-ranking official in Babylon, Perdiccas, had Alexander's body embalmed. Perdiccas spent the next two years making plans for Alexander's remains to be transported back to AJ Macedonia where he would be buried in a tomb in a manner customary to the kings of Macedonia. In those two years, Perdiccas personally oversaw the construction of a carriage that would hold the remains of Alexander on the journey back to Macedonia. The carriage was covered in gold and designed like a temple. It had details that recognized Alexander as a great leader and warrior. It was so big it required 64 mules to tow. In 321 BC, the boisterous funeral cart left Babylon for Macedonia, and although Perdiccas put a lot of effort into giving Alexander a befitting burial, but it didn't go as planned. The funeral plan goes sideways. Another influential ruler at the time, Ptolemy I of Egypt, heard that Alexander's remains were in possession of Perdiccas and he had a bright idea. Ptolemy considered Perdiccas as a rival in the times they lived in. He thought of the corpse of Alexander as some form of talisman. If he could somehow take the remains of the greatest warrior on earth from him, he would have won up Perdiccas, and his fame and that of his kingdom would spread throughout the world. Ptolemy made plans to intercept the transport of Alexander's remains to his homeland in Syria. Ptolemy bribed the escort, seized the cart, and took the body to Memphis in Egypt instead. Due to this turn of events, Perdiccas' authority was unsteady and he marched to Egypt and battled Ptolemy to restore his authority. Ironically, Ptolemy won the battle, killed Perdiccas, and had the secured remains of Alexander the Great. Next stop, Egypt. Five out of the ten interesting facts about Alexander's tomb occur in Egypt. After Ptolemy secured Alexander's body, he began fabricating tales that established connections between himself and Alexander. Word soon began to spread across Egypt that he was Alexander's half-brother, and Alexander was in fact a son of the past pharaoh of Egypt, Nectanebo II, who died in exile. Ptolemy had Alexander's remains mummified and transferred into the unoccupied sarcophagus created beforehand for Nectanebo II. These made-up connections between Alexander and Ptolemy helped him further secure his rule in Egypt. This was all due to Ptolemy's clever use of Alexander's body. 
In 301 BC, Ptolemy transferred Alexander's body to Alexandria, a city founded by Alexander. He changed the capital city from Memphis to Alexandria. In Alexandria, Ptolemy built a new elaborate tomb for Alexander. He built several monuments in honor of Alexander across the new capital, including a state cult of Alexander. He had Alexander publicly honored as the founder of the city and placed his statues throughout the city. Festivals were also celebrated in his honor and people from all over the world visited. Ptolemy obviously had a propaganda. His plan was to create a connection between his bloodline and the late king, thus ensuring the security of the reign of his descendants even long after his death. The Soma The smart use of the body of Alexander by Ptolemy I spread the fame of the Ptolemaic kingdom of Egypt across the world, just like he had planned. The wealth, splendor, and power of Ptolemaic Egypt were heavily emphasized. Alexander and subsequent Ptolemies became sacred. Long after the death of Ptolemy I in 215 BC, Ptolemy IV built a new royal burial complex. It was a magnificent project and was called the Soma. Ptolemy IV moved the body of Alexander from the tomb built by Ptolemy I. Alexander was laid in an enclosed underground chamber in the Soma. Alexander was laid alongside the Ptolemies, further emphasizing the link between the Ptolemaic dynasty and Alexander. The Soma soon became the heart of the city of Alexandria and a place of pagan pilgrimage as people journeyed from far and wide to see Alexander's tomb. The Diminishing of the Ptolemaic Dynasty If you love learning about history on Crunch, please show us some love and hit that like button. Back to the story. No lineage, no matter how great, can hold on to a position forever, and the Ptolemaic dynasty was not an exception. The once great dynasty soon became a shadow of its former glory. It was so bad that in 89 BC, Ptolemy X did the unthinkable. He needed money to pay off his debt, so he melted down Alexander's golden sarcophagus and replaced it with another sarcophagus made of glass. Ptolemy X wasn't the only ruler in the Ptolemaic dynasty that monetized materials from the Soma. In 31 BC, Cleopatra took gold from the tomb to finance her war against Octavian. Cleopatra's death marked the end of the dynasty that had ruled Egypt for more than three centuries and opened up the country to a new power, a power that was also interested in Alexander's tomb, albeit for different reasons. The Roman Invasion the death of Cleopatra, the last member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, marked the beginning of Roman Egypt. The Romans conquered and took over Egypt and Alexandria. The possession of the body of Alexander had changed yet again. As you may have noticed, the last two possessors of the warrior's remains had different reasons for being interested in the body. The Romans were the third possessors of the body and their interests in Alexander's remains were completely different from that of the Ptolemaic dynasty. In his days, Alexander built and oversaw the largest empire in the world. However, there were some countries that he did not conquer during his many conquests. Rome was one such city. Many people could not help but wonder what the outcome would have been if Alexander had decided to take on the great city of Rome. Alexander was a conqueror and the epitome of world power. To ambitious Romans, he was a man who had attained the status they desired. He was a man worthy of their respect and emulation. On different accounts, Roman leaders like Julius Caesar, Augustus, Titus, Caligula, Hadrian, and Vespasian visited the tomb in the Soma to pay their respects. The Romans had much contempt for the Ptolemies and were displeased by Alexander's obvious ties with them. Some historical accounts suggested that the Romans had the Ptolemaic tombs removed after they invaded Alexandria. Evolution Centuries after the Roman invasion, the city of Alexandria went through many events. These include wars, changes in leadership, and even religious and cultural changes. However, the tomb endured these times and was soon forgotten about. In 390 AD, a writer, Libanius, made the last known reference to Alexander's tomb and body in Alexandria. He mentioned that Alexander's body was on display in Alexandria. Within 10 years, by 400 AD, Alexander's body had vanished without a trace. The search for Alexander's body began yet again and has been ongoing ever since. 
The most likely explanation about the whereabouts of Alexander's body lies within the religious context of late 4th century Alexandria. A different group came around, one that had never been seen before. They were the followers of Christ. Alexandrian Christians Jews, Christians, and pagans lived with tolerance for one another for a long time. However, when the Roman Empire split, the Christians grew exponentially, making them a majority. The Christians were open condemners of paganism, and vandalism of pagan monuments was how they expressed their contempt. In 391 AD, an Eastern Roman Emperor, Theodosius, officially banned paganism and all forms of pagan symbols were to be destroyed. This officially enabled the Christians to go on with their violence. Monuments such as the Serapium, a temple to Serapis, were burnt to the ground. There are speculations that the tomb of Alexander suffered the same fate. The tomb, over time, became a pagan pilgrimage, as many Alexandrians worshipped Alexander. It is possible that the tomb was destroyed by the Alexandrian Christians. The body could have been retrieved before the tomb was vandalized, or it could have been destroyed along with the tomb. Although we can say for sure that this was the fate the tomb and body of Alexander suffered, it's a plausible explanation. However, another theory connects the disappearance of Alexander's tomb and remains with the Christians of Alexandria. The Alexandrian Christians didn't always destroy these pagan sites. Sometimes, they just converted them to churches. Andrew Chug put forward the theory that perhaps Alexander's tomb was converted to the Church of St. Mark, the pioneer Christian in Alexandria. The church was established in 390 AD when Alexander's body was last heard of. Chug suggests that Venetian merchants stole Alexander's body from Alexandria, who mistook it for St. Mark's. They then smuggled it to Venice and have venerated it as St. Mark's in the Basilica Cathedral Patriarchal di San Marco ever since. Over the years, as the search for Alexander's tomb and body continued, more sarcophagi have been found and analyzed. In 1801, the British Army seized a sarcophagus that they believed to be that of Alexander on one of their raids. Upon their arrival in Britain, the sarcophagus was analyzed and hieroglyphs confirmed that it was the sarcophagus of Nectaneba II. It was a bittersweet discovery because although it was disappointing that it wasn't Alexander's, it was also rewarding because it contained Alexander's body for a time before it was transferred to another tomb in Alexandria during the time of Ptolemy I. Even in our times, more speculations have been made about what happened to the tomb and body of Alexander. However, excavations of the remains of the ancient city of Alexandria and the effort of many archaeologists are channeled at coming up with factual data on the whereabouts of the tomb and the remains of Alexander the Great. Could Alexander's final resting place be underneath a church building in Alexandria or in Venice? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more history videos on Crunch.